Today I'm going to show a few modifications I made to this generic hot air popcorn popper to improve it as a home coffee roaster. These hot air popcorn poppers offer a very attractive way to roast small amounts of coffee at home. And they cost about $20 and provide consistent results in a fairly short amount of time. But they're also quite messy to operate and you need to catch the chaff while it's flying around. Uh, the hot and popcorn popper works in the principle of fluid bed roaster. So if you open this thing up, you'll see inside something like a hairdryer that pushes air through the slits. Um, these, uh, this way, the, the hair goes swirling around and it swirls the coffee while it's being roasted. So it, it moved the coffee quite a bit, giving you a consistent result fairly quickly. So I used this popcorn popper as a coffee roaster for a while, but I wanted to improve uh, several aspects of it. First of all, this has a very limited capacity. You can this one you can load about two ounces or 60, 60 grams every batch, and you need to hold this colander to catch chaff while it runs, uh, preferably with a wet paper towel on it. Um, So first of all, to improve the capacity, I ordered this 65mm uh, borosilicate glass tube. And this has a good fit to the opening of the coffee roaster. Uh, the glass tube holds a very substantial thermal mass. So this will essentially create a bigger cavity and will increase the size of the roasting chamber. To connect the tube, I used a three millimeter cork sheet. Uh, you can get these online, and the description says that it's, these are used for 3D printers on the hotbed, uh, and the, they have a high temperature adhesive backing. Uh, but they're also very good, a very good fit for a gasket. Uh, they make a great seal uh, at the temperatures that we're using here in the in the roaster, and they're very easy to replace. You just remove it with a new one if they get worn out. Um, mine didn't for a while. Um, added this pipe metal clamp to mark the height um, that I want to push the the tube into the popcorn popper, but that's really optional. You don't really have to do that. So after experimenting with this um, 1200 watt popcorn popper, I found out that you can get um, safely uh, up to about 90 grams, three ounces or half US cup uh, of green coffee. And I really don't recommend going over the maximum capacity of these devices. Um, these machines don't really have good heat management and you're sure to destroy the machine and trip the, the circuit breaker in your house. Uh, what I would recommend that when you get a machine, start with the rated amount and work your way up, uh, looking that the coffee really does swirl and doesn't get stuck. If you overload it, it'll just overheat and destroy itself. So anyway, you just uh, take your green peas and you load them up. And in order to tackle the chaff management, I found this really cool trick in a and blog I can't seem to find anymore uh, so I use this oversized mash tea strainer you can also get this online and the trick is to cut with the uh, small wire cutters the center of this fold the, uh, the rest on itself to create a seal and you can actually use this uh, to make a seal uh, this tea strainer can actually catch almost all the chaff uh, you get on top of it. So you plug the tea strainer on top and you let the machine run. Uh, this generates quite a, a fair amount of noise. So I'm gonna mute for a bit. Um, you need to start the timer uh, that you when you want to start uh, roasting coffee because you need to uh, watch the process. <laughs> After about three, three and a half minutes, depending on your coffee, you'll start hearing the first cracks. 
Uh, you'll notice that the coffee got lighter, it lost almost all of its moisture and it will start popping around. And you also see that almost all the chaff has been accumulated here in the, in the sides of the tea strainer. In about five minutes, in about five minutes, you'll get very consistent light roast that and you can keep roasting it to your liking I just stopped it to show the how light roast looks like and medium roast takes about six minutes I guess depending on your coffee uh, you just uh, put in a colander and let it cool on a window uh, somewhere uh, for a few minutes before using it uh, if your coffee isn't grated, like this is a double A grated coffee, so it's all pretty consistent size. Uh, you can, when you're roasting ungrated coffee, like this really nice Ethiopian uh, Yoga Chef coffee, uh, you see that it's not that consistent. Um, you can see that the smaller beans get much darker than the bigger ones. Uh, from experience, I would err on the lighter side, so you don't over uh, over roast the smaller ones and just stop uh, after about um, five, five and a half, maybe six minutes. Uh, don't go much more than that. Uh, with grated coffee, you can go darker. You can really uh, go really dark, maybe up to seven minutes. Uh, just make sure to listen to the first cracks and watch the coffee as it roasts and stop in the temperature that you like. You can now grind the, grind the coffee and use it for espresso or pour over. Uh, just note that when you roast coffee, it benefits from aging a few days, unlike grinding, which you should really do just uh, immediately before making coffee. So you can make these in advance and let it rest in an airtight container for five, six days before using them. And this, is, this will generate about so 90 grams will give you about about 77, 78 grams of roasted coffee after losing moisture, depending on the coffee itself, how dense it is and how how much moisture it contains. Um, this is about, I guess, almost three, almost um, just a bit over two and a half ounces. Um, and I think that's quite a nice quantity. Um, if you do uh, roast in batches, you really need to let the machine cool off completely uh, between batches. This is really important also for the safety of the machine and to the electricity in your house. I'm gonna now show how this ground coffee looks like. Uh, when making pullover. After about 10 minutes that everything has been cooled down, I ground the coffee and then you can see it has this beautiful consistent color. To get rid of the chaff, you have the tea strainer here, you just open it up and you have all the chaff flying around. Uh, if your coffee has very small beans to it. Some of the beans may travel here too. Uh, if you can just turn this over, give it a few shakes, get rid of all of the chaff in the in the trash. If we look at the coffee here after grinding, I'll just wet this a little bit to show. So what you can see here is that the coffee has been dried and by the roaster and after grinding it 
you can see that it blooms really nicely in the filter um, this is kind of like a medium grind but you can really see that how well it rises I hope you enjoyed it uh, I think making coffee this way is, isn't really a chore it's really fun it just takes about five six maybe seven minutes to roast uh, three ounces of coffee so um, I do this every a few days um, leave comments if you have any questions or ideas thank you